Hello everyone, welcome to another video, my name Command Double A and welcome to another Chelsea video for you guys. And this video is a bit different, slightly different than my usual usual one. Now usually I will be bringing you guys, I will be bringing you guys a Chelsea Transit Daily News video. But in this video, it's going to be more of a talking point video. Going over, you know, which, you know, comparing the left back situation and also the superstar marquee situation. And we know... That, you know, it's been out in various reports, various newspapers that we are after a top marquee signing. And I'm going to be looking at two specific players, Jaden Sancho and Kai Havertz, comparing them both statistically, analysing both of them and giving my thoughts opinions on which I think would be more suited, which I think is more likely. And I'll be doing the same with the left back situation. So tag the feet going comparing the two with the stats and analysing both of them. But if you do enjoy this, feel free to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel if you are on here. Hit the bell notification and comment down below your first opinions in the comment section below. Who would you rather, Kai Havertz or Jaden Sancho? And with the left-back situation, would you rather Alex Hedes or Tagli Fico? But without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now, starting off with the first comparison, that is between Kai Havertz and Jaden Sancho. Now, both of them have had terrific seasons in the Bundesliga. Both of them have been magnificent. They've been phenomenal. It's probably an understatement. Now, starting off with Jaden Sancho, let's go over the basic statistics, his goals and assists for this season. Now, so far this season in the Bundesliga, he's had 27 appearances, 22 of them have been the start. So in 27 appearances, he's had 17 goals and 16 assists, which is magnificent numbers and he's just recently turned 20. So for a 20-year-old, producing those type of numbers is incredible. Amazing, outstanding numbers and to be honest, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed and that's why it'd be a marquee, you know, superstar sign that won't come at a cheap cost. So we, we're looking at exceeding the £100 million mark just for his signature. But 17 goals and 16 assists is a terrific amount in my opinion. That's outstanding stats. So when it comes to end product, he has the end product. He's a goal scoring winger and he matches the exact profile that we need at this club. He sits, he suits Frank Lampard's system. We have a lot of creators, a lot of playmakers, your puller six, your Hudson Doys, but James Sancho is a goal scoring winger and that's what we're missing. We're creating a bundles amount of chances. We're creating countless chances game after game, but we haven't got uh, you know, we're missing that cutting edge in the final third. And Jane Sancho would be someone who'd bring that to our team. He's a goal scoring winger, right winger as well, and he's perfect for our system. Um, now, getting into a bit more, you know, the detailed statistics. Now, when it, if you look at his, you know, positioning when it comes to scoring his goals, now, when he's played from the attacking midfield on the right hand side in those 10 appearances, he's had three goals and six assists. He scored five goals from playing on the left hand side, he scored one goal as a substitute. Seven goals as a cam, two goals from the forward right, and one goal from the attacking midfield left. So he plays all across the front three, but predominantly he does like to play on that right hand side. That's where he gets the joy. He can play on the left hand side because he's right foot, so he can cut on his favour the right foot, but he plays all across. He's very comfortable, and this shows that he likes to interchange into position. He's very comfortable on both sides. He's versatile, he's quick, and is unpredictable and that's what you want in your your winger you want them to be unpredictable to cause issues to cause problems for that defense and i think jay and sandra does exactly that and for me it's promising it's really really good i think that we should be giving all our attention towards him now look at his characteristics his main strengths of course we know is very very strong at his passing very strong at key passing very strong at dribbling his finishing is strong taking set pieces are strong and he's holding onto the ball very very press resistant silky dribbling is on point you know, that ball is like a glue to his feet, an absolute magnet, you know, weeds past players, dribbles past them, agility on point. And let's look at his style of play. His style of play, he likes to play short passes, he likes to dribble, he likes to do a lot of layoffs as well, counter-attacking threat and does not dive and tackle, so his discipline is quite good. Now, two major weaknesses is his defensive contribution, which can be an issue when you're defending off the ball, his defending off the ball is not good. And his aerial drills is weak, which is understandable because he is not too tall. Now, with a defensive contribution, that can be easily be fine-tuned. That can easily be improved because he's only 20 years of age. He hasn't understood that that tactical aspect of the game yet. As he improves, as he gets older, you know, as he gets more coaching, his defensive contribution will naturally improve. He will defend a lot more. He will track back a lot more. And that's just natural. You can't expect the 20-year-old to be tactically astute already. It's going to take time. So for me, it's not a surprise that that's one of his weaknesses. And that can easily be addressed, in my personal opinion. But let's get into Kai Havertz, his competition, as, as I say, a, a player that we're, you know, competing for, that's on our shortlist that we are heavily interested in, that we could sign either Sancho or Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz 
He's also 20 years of age, so both of them are extremely young. But both of them are generational talents. He's, you know, one of Germany's, you know, superstars. And he's more of an attacking midfielder, but he is very versatile. He can play on the left-hand side, all across the front three. He can play also in the fourth line position. And that's what, you know, that's a part of the reason why he suits Lampard's system, because he can play all across the front three. And when there's an injury crisis, you need players that can, you know, have that versatility that can be usable. And that's a massive, massive trait. Now, getting into, again, his basic stats of goals and assists. So far in the Bundesliga, 26 appearances, 11 goals and 5 assists. Tremendous numbers for a midfielder. And let's not forget he plays for a work for a worse team compared to Sancho playing at Dortmund. He's playing at Bayer Leverkusen. Now, let's go into, you know, playing position. So, from the attacking midfield position, which is a natural position, three goals, three assists. From the forward centre, seven goals and one assist is best output. From the forward right, uh, four appearances, two goals, two assists. From the attacking midfield position on the right, four appearances, one goal, one assist. So... Yeah, very good numbers again. It shows you his versatility, which is crucial. His characteristics, his head attempt is very, very strong. As we know, he's quite tall, so he's got the aerial threat. Holding onto the ball is strong, so you know he's got that um, you know, press resistance. Passing is strong, three balls is strong, finishing strong, dribbling is very, very strong. His crossing is a bit weak, his defensive contribution is quite weak, and his tackling is weak, which is quite disappointing considering he's a midfield and as a number, it's a number 10. You should have it, you know, decent defensive numbers. But again, he is 20 now. I'm going to make the same point as Sancho where you can't be tactically astute at 20 years of age. That's going to come with coaching, with experience, with age. That is going to come. So, you know, patience with him, but he's a generation talent, no doubt about it. Hence why he's one of the sought after talents who got numerous elite clubs after his signature. And for me, I wouldn't mind either Havertz or Sancho. They're both top, top talents. And he likes to do layoffs, cut inside, counter attacking threat, and does not dive in tackles again. Good disciplinary. Now, the question on the post to you guys is who would you rather us sign as a marquee signing? Kai Havertz or Jaden Sancho? If you ask me personally, I would probably edge it towards Sancho, only because we've had more interest. He's English and he's had he'd suit better to the Premier League, so you know, he'd get adjust the Premier League a lot more. He was born in London, so he was set into life a lot more, and I think that he suits our system slightly more, considering we also signed Hakim Ziyech as well. So I think that Jaden Sancho is the one that suits Lampard better, because you know, we are desperate need, a dire need of a goal-scoring winger. But like I said, I would not complain. Havertz is a top, top, top talent. But what do you guys think? Who would you rather have, Havertz or Sancho? Leave me your thoughts between in the comment section below. Well, the next comparison I want to make is between Alex Tellez and Nicolas Tagliafico. I, I made a slight comparison in previous videos and trying to daily videos, but I want to make a more detailed comparison. Now, two left backs to be sought after. We know left back is a key position that we need to address. Now, with Alex Tellez, 27 years of age, again, the same age as Tagliafico, both of them 27 years of age, and he has one of the best goal scoring statistics as a fullback this season in Europe. Eight goals and five assists in 23 appearances, which is magnificent in my opinion for a left back. With again, he's a fullback. And for me, these are tremendous numbers. Absolutely amazing numbers. And his offensive ability when it comes to, you know, attacking is phenomenal. He has that pace, that agility. Now, when I look at his characteristics for Alex Tellis, his crossing is immensely strong. One of the best crossers for a fullback in Europe, hands down. The crosses that he provides are magnificent. The variety of crosses, low crosses, high crosses, medium crosses. The pace that he has, he's a magnificent cross. A world-class, when it comes to offensive abilities, he's a world-class fullback. And that's more important offensively in the modern era. Very, very strong when it comes to crossing. Very strong when it comes to key passes. Taking set pieces, he's a maestro. He's fantastic at taking penalties. And he's amazing at taking free kicks. He's a set-piece specialist. Holding onto the ball, very, very strong. Um, you know, he's press resistant and it's key in a Lampard system. When you're counter pressing in his style, you need to be press resistant. Aerial draws are strong as well, which is very, very good for defending. However, tackling is a weakness. And as a fullback, defensively, if you're not that good at tackling, that is a bit of an issue. And he's in his prime. That is one bit I'm worried about, Alex says, when it comes to defending in the Premier League. In Liga Nost, you can get away with that, but in the Premier League, you can get punished by wingers, and we could be leaking more goals on that left hand side if Alex Tellez is not that good at tackling, which is what Tagliafico is better at. He started to play, likes to cross, likes to play short passes, and does not dive into tackles. Now, getting into Tagliafico again, his counterpart, to also 27 years of age. Uh, one goal, one assist, and six appearances in the Champions League, and in 23 appearances in the Ed de Visa. Three goals for us. So, another one that produces high amounts of numbers for a fullback when it comes to goals and assists. 
Now let's look at his characteristics. Strengths, very strong at passing, very strong at key passes, strong at crossing, press resistance, which is key, and ball interception is strong, and he has no significant weaknesses, which is a major, major benefit. Now we know Tate Fico is much better defensively compared to Alex Tellez, whereas Alex Tellez is superior when it comes defensively. Now, it really depends on your style of play. Who would you rather have as a left back? Someone who's more offensive or someone who's more defensive? And as a result, you can judge and, you know, come to your own conclusions. Now, think of it this way. We have Reese James, who's quite offensive and, you know, he's, he's built strong. He's a top, top talent when it comes to Chelsea. He has the potential to be one of the best right backs in the world. Do you want someone to balance it with Tagli Fico, which they'll suit nice together? Or do you want two offensive fullbacks causing havoc, creating problems both? Fantastic and world-class at crossing. And it would add a lot more output towards the final third. Similar to how Liverpool play with your Robertsons and Arnolds. Or do you want someone more defensive? Leave me your thoughts for in the comment section below. It's about preference. Who would you rather us sign? Alex Hedges or Tagli Fico? Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. But if you did enjoy this talking point video, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you are on here. Hit the bell notification and I'll see you guys for my next video. Peace.